Hello everyone and welcome to the second part of this MOOC dedicated to the FCC fractionation section. In the first part we spoke about the reaction section and we recalled the typical yields out of the reactor. It's now time to get into the details of the fractionation section. When the effluent in gas form comes out of the reactor, its temperature is around 520 degrees C. Then this effluent is routed to the main fractionation column, also called manfrac. This column is equipped with trays and or packing and operates at a pressure in equilibrium with the FCC reaction section, I mean one bar above atmospheric pressure. But in fact, it is more the opposite, since it is this main fractionator of the red pressure which sets the pressure of the reaction section. This column is typically equipped with 40 fractionation trays or the equivalent in packing height. In this column, the effluent in gas form enters the bottom of the column and its temperature is rapidly decreased to the superheat the vapors and let the heaviest molecule condense. We will detail all this a little bit later in the smoke. As in any conventional distillation, the column overhead gas will be partially condensed in a condenser before being routed to the reflex drum. This reflex drum typically operates between 30 and 40 degrees C and at a pressure of about 1 bar above atmospheric pressure. In this reflex drum, we will separate the gas that is not able to be condensed at 40 degrees C and 1 bar above atmospheric pressure. This gas is a mixture of hydrogen, methane, ethane, ethylene and the H2S produced in the reactor, as well as part of the LPG, I mean C3 and C4. The liquid that is condensed in the override condenser and that is recovered in the reflux drum is on one hand the gasoline cut produced in the reactor and on the other hand some liquid water. This water corresponds to all the steam that has been injected, which is now under liquid form. This water is extracted and leaves the process. So, we have a liquid gas equilibrium in this reflux drum. So, inevitably, we can find a little gasoline in the overhead gas and a little LPG and fuel gas in the liquid gasoline. We have a so-called imperfect separation. Then, as in any distillation column, some of the condensed gasoline will be re-injected into the main column and this is called the reflux. This liquid reflux ensures the flow of liquid descending into the column to allow the fractionation of the different cuts in the column. Then, depending on the needs of the refinery and its refining scheme, several cuts can be found with different denominations and cut points. In our case, we will take an example of a side draw of a cut that will be called a LLCO for light light cycle oil. And this cut is the light part of the LCO that we have seen in previous parts. A little bit lower in the column, an HLCO cut will also be extracted. This cut is the mixture of the heavy part of the LCO and the light part of the HCO. Finally, in the tower bottoms, we get the slurry. As in the MOOC dedicated to atmospheric distillation, let's now have a look on the material balance of the column. See you in the third part of this MOOC dedicated to the FCC fractionation section. In the meantime, do not hesitate to test your knowledge by answering the five questions available in the quiz. The link to the quiz is available in the description of the video. You can also get a certificate if you ask for it. I also invite you to subscribe to my YouTube channel to keep you informed about the upcoming videos. See you very soon for the next part. Bye-bye!